So today I'd like to really cover things like, you know, what technologies are needed to drive more digital inclusion. You know, with the WEF and ITU, we found that almost half the households, 50% of the households don't have uh, access to high-speed connectivity. So 30 Mbps plus. Uh, while we, of course, have 5G being deployed, you know, how can we really gain scale there as well? Um, are there different uh, uh, roles that satellite can play as a technology uh, in the technology portfolio? As well as are there different models of sharing that can really drive more affordable connectivity? I think wireless is the way to go if we want to close the gap faster. What is important is, of course, to reduce the cost and bring robustness to the network. And uh, we, we feel that Wi-Fi mesh networks are a very uh, you know, good technology to look at. Uh, very interesting technology, um, and uh, in fact, as a uh, you know, uh, you know, it 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 might be an interesting combination of low frequency and high frequency wireless solutions to work together uh, to solve the both backhaul as well as access uh, problem. Uh, fiber to the home is indeed uh, uh, the choice if you need broadband, especially in areas where high speed and massive coverage uh, is requi required. Fiber to the home has also the lowest OPEX. Um, if, if, if you look outside the plant, uh, the actual network, it, it is passive. So it, it has a very low power consumption. And once deployed, uh, the network can also be used to serve other customers, not just residentials or, or small enterprises, but, uh, but also 5G small cells. So it could be a stepping stone to, to uh, a wider uh, deployment of, of, of different technologies. Fixed wireless access can be a valuable uh, complement to fiber, um, especially in areas where there are no fixed infrastructure. There it can actually be the dominant uh, broadband uh, provider technology. And as such, we believe that uh, fixed wireless access will be uh, a key uh, play uh, a key role uh, uh, for the, uh, bridging the digital divide. Satellites are already a cost-effective means to bring people online, uh, especially those who are beyond the reach of terrestrial networks. We are right now, as you said, Vishali, seeing huge evolutions in the technology, uh, but I would point out it's both in the space and in the ground segment. And this is increasing the satellite offering to the connectivity system ecosystem overall. The momentum of the terrestrial sector in investing in satellite is really a testimony to the importance placed on backhaul by mobile operators. And that the legacy divisions between mobile fix and satellite are dissolving slowly but surely. Um, the increasing mobile interest in satellite is very much a public confirmation that the optimum solution for future connectivity really does lie in a combination of technologies, um, uh, pooling the strengths of different technologies to collectively deliver higher resilience, greater availability, and that too for a much larger number of users. And the other thing is to manage all this complexity, uh, automation, and let's say relying on uh, uh, AI, AI sorry, uh, algorithm will be key as well. We cannot manage on a legacy mode such complex and such, uh, let's say, enhanced and modern networks. So I believe the costs that our next generation networks bring upon us require dense and heavy fiber deployments. But this can be offset by careful resource sharing and planning together with lowering the costs of core network operations as they become a software defined commodity and getting virtualized. We talk a lot about many technologies in 5G. We talk a lot about radio and we don't talk as much about the um, you know, underlying software infrastructure, just the, 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 the big transformation that's happening from a software perspective. The transformation that we will see in the world really will come from autonomous networks. We've bridged the the gap between data, AI, and autonomous networks and autonomous control. And what we see is incredible potential in what networks um, can be capable of once you um, really implement evolutionary algorithms. So we have to further encourage investment in ICT infrastructure, but also we have to use the already existing capacities. New technologies and digital solutions are providing more and more choices and alternatives for more affordable connectivity, particularly in underserved 
and unconnected area.